This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. It's Obehave with Arden Moore. This show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, our two special guests today have plenty to whoop about. They are unleashing lots of innovative ways to bring out the best in your pet and give you peace of mind. Please give pause and applause to a pair of, I call them top dogs, from a company called Woofies. They are Amy Addington and Liz Gibbs. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, everyone, Amy Addington is the co-founder of Woofies, and it's celebrating its 20th anniversary, and they have locations throughout the country. Liz Gibbs is the one running the show as a general manager for the Woofies location in Delray Beach, Florida. We're going to find out a little bit about what the heck Woofies is after we take this break. So you all know the drill. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. What's up, pet pals? Arden Moore here, your host of the O Behave Show. Me? Wow. Did you know there's up to 100 million free roaming cats in the United States? And without spay or neuter, that number is only going to keep growing. Not only does spay, neuter, humanely reduce the community cat population, it keeps cats healthy. Scooter, the neuter cat, is on a mission to give cats an extra life by making it hip to be snipped. Hey, check them out. Go to GiveThem10.org. That's GiveThemTen.org. And help us make this a better world for cats. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. In my capacity, I wear a lot of collars in the pet world. And I was writing a pet column for a monthly publication in South Florida called The Coastal Star. And I stumbled upon these two. And they are at the helm of Woofies. And it does many things in the pet world, as you discover. And they are very innovative. So I said, hey, I would love to have you on our show, too. So this is how we came to be. So starting out with Amy Addington. Amy, you said uh, 20 years ago you were in the corporate world. What were you doing in the corporate world? I was in telecom and also in the data world. So I was actually in Silicon Valley, kind of near the end of the whole dot com and um, had about 12 plus years in corporate and really always wanted to have my own business. And I always had that passion for animals. And when I moved back to Virginia, it just there was such a need in our global community for that type of business. So I literally quit my corporate job. I teamed up with my neighbor, Leslie Barron. And I always joke, I went from a six-figure corporate salary, cushy job. And our first day on the job, we walked one dog for ten for $10. So it was very eye-opening, but I loved it. That's very humbling, isn't it? Now, it I'm very just humbling. curious, with your tech background, you've never named a dog.com? No. <laughs> I was happy to put those days behind. So Okay. Yeah, And we're going to dive more in a, in a bit, but you have now, as general manager of your Delray Beach location, you have Liz Gibbs and Lions and Tigers and, oh, oh, oh my, tell us your background. You have such a great vibe, by the way. I like absolutely oh, love it. thanks. You know what? I'm happy with myself. I too switched 
years in the life and I'm glad I did. Yeah. Never look back, I'm sure. No, I mean, I, I, I thought all I would be was a, a newspaper reporter. And, and my mom was had cancer years ago. And she said, are you just going to have a life where all you do is write about others? What do you really want to do? And she kind of got me into the pet world and teaching and, and writing and doing things like this and helping nonprofits. So yeah, my mom, she kind of nudged me in a good way. My mom was a big influence. She passed nine years ago of cancer, and she was a very big influence in me starting with these and was the biggest champion from day one. Damn those moms. They're 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 special. We're going to dive in a little bit more about Amy's background, but we also want you all to know about Liz Gibbs and what a background she has. She hung out with real lions and tigers, and now you have three tabbies at home, not Bengals, right? You got like... (laughs) Domestic cats. So tell us a little bit about domestic your Domestic cats. I wish I could have a tiger. <laughs> sure. Um, so again, my name is Liz. Uh, I went to Rutgers University. I got a degree in animal science. So ever since I was a little kid, I loved all kinds of animals. I spent most birthdays asking to go to the zoo. I loved being with dogs, volunteering at animal shelters. So I knew it was something I wanted to do with my entire life. So I was very fortunate while I was at Rutgers. I worked with horses, livestock, you know, sheep, goats, pigs, loved it. But I wanted something a little more exotic, a little more fun. So I became a zookeeper. I think a tiger's I, fun. Yes. <laughs> so I worked at Six Flags Great Adventure Safari. It was awesome. Oh, nice. um, so I was an animal trainer, a zookeeper. Got to work with a wide variety of animals, reptiles, birds, mammals. Um, it was great. And I was able to educate the public on the importance of conservation, different animal success stories, endangered species. Um, but I was always with dogs, too. I was always pet sitting on the side. I always loved to be around them. Um, and then I decided to kind of change my life up a little bit. I relocated to South Florida uh, and I found Woofies and Woofies had everything that I wanted. It had, you know, pet sitting, rooming, dog walking. So plus the business side of it. And it's been a really great fit. So I've kind of gone all over with different animals. It's kind of like an evolution. It, everything was yeah. pieces of a pet puzzle that you were putting together. Do you know what cats and giraffes have in common? No, I don't actually. A cat can jump the height of a giraffe. That's really impressive. Wow. Because I know the giraffes are about 18 feet tall. That and nothing will help you buy a car. But I just am full of kind of <laughs> interesting information. So Woofies, let's get back to Amy. Woofies is many things. I want to first get up with the name. Who You and uh, Leslie Barron were neighbors in Virginia. And you you mentioned you quit your corporate job and your first day in the in self owning of woofies, you made ten dollars. Yes. Well five technically. Oh yeah. Technically. And before taxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Very <laughs> humbly indeed. Yes. But, um the most rewarding. I re- I remember it's a beautiful September day and I remember thinking we're on to something. I don't know where it's gonna go, but I'm madly in love with this business already. And being outside and walking the dogs was just incredible. And I was, you know, as we were saying, I uh, never looked back after leaving. So you started as in like a dog walker, pet sitting. And then I believe you were looking into the adding grooming in about 2011, 2015. Yeah, 2011. And what happened, we started in 2004. We built up a really great base of customers for pet sitting and dog walking and everything was really predicated on that relationship with the customers and having that really personalized experience. And our customers kept asking us about grooming. And at the time, nobody was really doing mobile grooming. And we didn't know much about it. We were not groomers by trade by any means. Um, But we bootstrapped our first van and hired our first groomer. And we learned very quickly um, everything there was to know about grooming. Um, But we found it was really a great addition to our service offering because we already had that relationship with the customers. We knew the pets, we knew their routine. We had the trust of our owners who were, had access to their homes to go in and take care of their pets. So it was really just a natural extension to add the mobile grooming piece. I like that. And, you know, you think about that, that's not that long ago. I know. So for well, many, many years, people would book appointments to go to a brick and mortar to take their pet to the groomer. And now you're offering another option. I'm going to ask uh, Liz, have you ever groomed a tiger? No, I I have groomed a sloth, though. Our our sloth, we use some brushes for 
Yeah, it was very fun. Very slow, but it was fun. Interesting tidbit. Hey, everyone. We're speaking with two impressive women. Amy Addington, she's one of the co-owners of this big franchise called Woofies. And uh, she brought on with her one of her top mates. It's a general manager at the Delray Beach store. And she is Liz Gibbs. And as Amy was saying, they do a lot in the pet world. Let's name it all. Well, let me ask. Let's see how good your general manager is at um, the Delray Beach office. Liz, can you kind of highlight some of the services that Woofies offers lucky dogs living in South Florida? Sure. So we offer dog walking, which is one of our most popular services, which is great for people who work long days. Um, Dog needs a little bit extra exercise. We're there for you. We also offer pet sitting, which is really cool because it's not limited to just dogs and cats. We also do pet sitting for reptiles, birds, fish, any animals that a customer might have. Um, And then we have our mobile grooming piece. So a lot of our pet sitting clients are also our grooming clients. So we really form that relationship um, and get to know the dog on different levels and become part of their family, as well as them becoming part of the Whoopies family. Um, and we also do a lot of events as well around. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You do some things to benefit nonprofits in your area, and you have something really near and dear to my heart since I am the founder of National Dog Party Day. You have yappy hours. Yes, <laughs> That is my favorite part. You just recently had a yappy hour, Liz? Yep, we had several of ours, so I love it. It's a really great time for us to kind of meet local dog owners. We can do it pretty anywhere. We've done it at different bars and restaurants, apartment complexes, homeowners associations. And it's a great time for people to come get a wash and go bath, get a nail trim for their dog. Um, But have the dogs meet. It's a play date. Um, A lot of the restaurants will have drink specials that benefit local animal rescues, which is great. We recently had the Bargarita Cocktail. And the proceeds went to the local animal rescue. It was really cute. So people, they love that. Um, but it's just fun. We give out bag. You know, it's just great to meet people and kind of get involved. And from a broader perspective, Amy, how many woofies are there? We have 45 locations nationwide. Wow. You started pretty well from uh, a 20-year celebration. Anything special you're trying to do to uh, celebrate this 20th anniversary in business? We have some things planned. I mean, you know, for me, continuing to grow the brand is honestly the most exciting part of this. And I think the best way to celebrate our 20-year anniversary, um, bringing on these new franchise owners who are opening up their Wolfies locations in their own local communities is beyond rewarding. And um, I'm still kind of amazed by it. You know, I go to a new city and go to a grand opening event of one of our new owners and seeing their grown ban and they're meeting their team and I, it's never getting old to me it's just so amazing like it's just it's very exciting to see that so give me a few locations where you are don't name all 45 please the show will be open before then <laughs> rochester new york um we're in sacramento we're in boulder wow. colorado the woodlands texas grand rapids michigan i know where the woodlands are yeah Blitler. All right, you get around. And oh, yeah. there was in uh, your area at, near Delray, there is a place called a Big Dog Ranch. What do you do for them? And what is that group? It's a nonprofit. Yeah, so Big Dog Ranch Rescue, they're a really great organization. Um, they have several locations across the country, but they have about 500 dogs. I think it's over 30 something acres. Um, and they help all dogs. They help puppy mill rescues, senior dogs, um, and they really work with fosters, get them adopted out. Their facility is beautiful. They have homes for moms with puppies. They have senior living houses. So um, we really feel like it's a very important mission. So don't you treat them to like a spa day kind of thing? What do you do for these dogs? Yeah, so we go in there and a lot of these dogs have come from bad living situations like puppy mills or hoarding cases, and they're scared. They've never been before, and this kind of gives them a fresh start to get adopted. So we do complimentary spa services on them, um, get them feeling good, looking their best, um, just helps get them human contact as well. So we work with them very close. And a lot of those in turn become therapy dogs. So we started grooming oh. for the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office. Um, it's really cute. It's, it's, I hope I'm going to tear you, but they have these dogs that were in bad situations. They were rescued and now they go help children at libraries, schools, airports. Um, so it's cool to see it come full circle with dogs. So it's important. <laughs> I've had four pets be certified as therapy pets. And two dogs. And I got to tell you, nothing like dog love. And police officers and departments like you're talking about are now getting not just the regular canine cop, 
you know, they're getting that sniffs bonds and bombs and chases the bad guys. You're, you're getting the emotional support dogs on the police force. So I'm very happy to see that Woofies has had a play in that. So speaking of that, um, your personal pets, because they are listening, Amy, they're listening. <laughs> here, uh, here. You need to do a shout out to who you have. And are they very doggone lucky? I bet they smell beautiful. They do get a lot of bats and grooms, which is nice. One of the uh, perks of them, yeah, that's, that's thing that doesn't groom anything. I have Bogey. He is a 15-year-old King Charles Cavalier. I have Pablo, who is a four-year-old Golden Doodle. And Carlos is a year and a half Mastiff Doodle. Oh, my gosh. These are not little dogs, except, for, well, Bogey's little. So how much does Carlos weigh? He's actually not that big. He's smaller than Pablo. He's about 50 pounds, and oh. Pablo's about 55 pounds. He's a Mastiff Doodle. We're actually doing the Ancestry DNA Good kit luck. because I'm not really sure how much Mastiff is in there. So it'll be fun to see the results. Okay, but I understand you found a hot spot on Bogey during a grooming session. We did. Um, he had has very curly hair, and there was a hot spot underneath. And our groomer, when she was taking care of him, um, and I was giving him, having her give him a shave down for the summer, and there was that hot spot underneath that would not have seen normally. And it was, you know, it was one of those scenes as a pet owner, you know, you want to be able to talk to a vet right away. You know, do we need to go into the, the vet immediately? What do we need to do to treat him and make him more comfortable? And that's one of the benefits of grooming. It's not just, I always say, it's not just about putting bows in their hair and making them smell nice. I mean, it's really, you know, their overall health, wellness, and safety and, and keeping, you know, that hands and eyes on the dogs and that snout to tail assessment that the groomer does. And they find things that a lot of times even the best owners can't find. So that regular grooming is great. You guys are on the front line. Groomers are on the front line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we go on the break, Liz, who are your, you've got three felines and one very cat loving dog. Yes. Yeah, so I'm a little bit of a cat lady, not crazy, but I do love cats. <laughs> so I'm two black cats, Willow and Pepper. I have a rag doll, Charlie. He's um, very much a ham. He thinks he's a dog. And then we have Molly, who is a pit bull chihuahua mix. So interesting breed. A pit bull um, chihuahua mix. Okay. Yeah, she was a rescue from Puerto Rico. And then we have uh, a bearded dragon named Apollo. So he's fun. So who runs the show? Pepper, the cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she puts everyone in charge. Yeah, so, yeah. So she is the the top dog. Now, do you ever groom cats at Woofies? We're looking into grooming cats. Yes, that's definitely on our list of things we want to accomplish next. Because a rag doll, what's the coat like challenge for you? So he has a lot of hair, so it's a lot of brushing, a lot of maintenance on him. But he's one of the mm -hmm. best behaved cats. So as soon as we get a cat groomer, he's going to be our first uh, client. <laughs> No, no opportunities for bearded dragon groomers. I can cut nails, so if there's a, a need for that out there. Wolfies will do it. <laughs> and before we take a break, how do people find out about Wolfies nationally and then in the Delray Beach area? So nationally, Amy, Wolfies dot com and spell that. Sorry, just W O O F I E S dot com. Okay. And if they're in Palm Beach County, Liz? So social media and yappy hours. So we're always out and about in town. So you can stop in your local restaurant and chances are we're going to be there or on social media is the best way. So woofies.com slash Delray uh, Beach. Yeah, yeah Delray Beach. Mm -hmm. Delray Beach. Okay, that's great. Hey, we're speaking with Amy Addington and Liz Gibbs from Woofies. When we come back, we're going to dive into two things that they're doing that I think makes them stand like a, a Great Dane in, a, in a, a pack of chihuahuas, and that is Veterinary Telehealth Partnership and these tripped-out vans for mobile grooming. So you're going to find out more because this is where the new future is for our beloved pets. So everybody, sit, stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. 
With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Amy Shore. You're listening to Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio, where they keep it real and make everyone feel like they're pets. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OBHAVE. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore, and I am so excited. We have two amazing people. They are Amy Addington and Liz Gibbs. They are from Woofies. Check them out. Check them out. We've talked a little bit about how they started this business humbly in Virginia with one dog on one day, and now they have over 45 locations across the country, and they keep expanding, but they keep offering more services. We live in 2024. Lots has happened. High tech is here and other things. And people are busy. And people rely on professional pet sitters and dog walkers who are licensed, certified, and bonded as woofies are. But Amy, you saw that there is a need for getting out of the brick and mortar, maybe grooming, to bringing the grooming van to that person and i think you told me once it's not like a shaggy van with rock and roll music coming out right right yeah not the dumb and dumber shag and wagon so um (laughs) the grooming vans have definitely evolved over the years we partnered with wagon tails who is the leader um in converting the mobile grooming vans and truly creating these mobile pet spas and that's what they are mobile pet spas i like that yeah yeah it's a true mobile pet spa it's bringing all the comforts and amenities of a salon right to your driveway. And so our business, our our, uh, customers are very busy and, you know, having that convenience of being able to pull up to their driveway and really for the pet, it's the one-on-one grooming experience that allows the groomer to interact directly with the client and then to have that one-on-one time with the dog or or the cat in the grooming van, um, which is really important. Um, It's just making that a really positive experience for the pet. And I've written about two dozen pet books, including the Dog Behavior Answer book. So, Liz, you really do vet out the dog, the cat, and the client to determine what's the best setup, right, to have. Should the pet parent be in the van or not? Can you give people a little bit of idea of the time you take to get to know the pet and the person? Sure. It's like Amy said earlier, we do a snout-to-tail assessment on every single animal. Um, Again, just to make sure, like, if we see any allergies, hot spots, or dry skin, we can recommend the appropriate products. Um, most dogs do better in a mobile grooming van when it's one-on-one, just the groomer and the dog. Because they could play nice soothing music, um, even audio books, like any kind of things like that help keep the dog calm. Oh, interesting. But we always let the owner know what's going on every step of the way. So we're very open and say, hey, we noticed this on your dog or recommend different haircuts, techniques. We have the Fun in the Sun package, which is very popular in Del Rey. Slow down. You know it. We don't. Fun yes. <laughs> in the Sun. What? All right, I'm in. What is it? I'm going to come back as a doodle. <laughs> so it's as fun as it sounds. A lot of dogs in Delray, Amy's dogs included, they love to swim. They're at the beach, in the pool. But of course, you know, they're out in the sun. So we offer the fun on this, like have a little sunscreen for their nose, paw balm for their paws, um, help, you know, keep their nice and clean from chlorine. So that's very popular as well. So it's popular, but it's also healthy. Yes. We get a lot of Labradors, Golden Retrievers, who they love to jump right in the water, even after we like jump right back in. So <laughs> it helps keep them moisturized. So we like to personalize it to each individual dog. At level. Now, I know that after uh, through COVID, there was a lot of adoptions. And then people, many people went back to work. And there is a spike, a rise, if you would, in uh, dogs that have some form of separation anxiety. So how do you decide if it's better for the pet parent to be in the van with the dog and the groomer, or if it's better to not? How do you make that call? Really by reading the dog body language. Um, so you can tell based on their eyes, ears, positioning, licking their lip. Um, a lot of times if the dog is nervous, I personally go myself to the grooms as well. Since especially being around exotic animals and around domestic animals for so long, 
I can kind of read the body language and kind of see go at the dog's pace. So having an extra presence in there is, is calming for them as well. But we've definitely had owners come in, especially if they're dogs first experience. They come okay. in as well, join us, help, you know, make it a positive experience. You don't want poly panic, right? No, no, <laughs> no. I don't know. You got to be careful because in the dogs, like, uh, so you kind of need somebody that is a little more relaxed, right? So usually I, I'll go in, help like hold the dog, cuddle the dog, you know, baby talk goes a long way with them. But usually keeping the door closed and it's calm, it's air conditioned, it helps, you know, make the, the pet feel secure. So if we're calm and relaxed, usually the animal will be as well. So um, Amy, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this van. You just don't pick one up at a car lot. You you mentioned you have a, a company that, can you give us a little specs on this van and some of the features, it's like a hydraulic lift? Yeah, so we um, they have multiple models that our owners can choose from. So we have um, two different types of Mercedes, the Quantum and the Mercedes. Okay, Wait, of course, it's a mobile pet spot. <laughs> so, but we do have um, Dodge options, Ford options. So that's really kind of a owner preference of what type of vehicle itself. But the inside is all standardized, and that's where Wagon Tails comes in with the custom upfitting. It is a mobile spa, so you do have the table is on hydraulics. So especially for those bigger dogs, it, you know, have the table go all the way to the ground. And nice. really you have to think about the safety and comfort of the pet. You have to also think very much so the safety and comfort of your groomer. This is their workspace. And what I love about Wagon Tails is it, their vans have been designed and optimized over the years based on groomer feedback and they come from a grooming family oh. so it's really designed with the pet and the groomer in mind so you have the table on hydraulics once the table is lifted up there's actually a little bridge where the groomer can essentially walk the dog into the tub versus picking them up and nice. lifting them or putting them in the tub um, you have to be really careful with the groomers it's a very physically demanding job and you don't want to put any extra pressure on them from a physical standpoint. And also it's safer for the pets that are in the van, which obviously is extremely important. But the pet spa has, you know, furnace for our friends in Rochester in those winter months. We have the AC for all of our beach towns. And um, it's really all designed to keep everything very comfortable for the pet and the groomer. And it, it seems like, you know, when they're in a grooming van, you make an appointment and they're not in that van for five, six hours. One concern I have, and especially pets that have separation, is if you book an appointment for a brick and mortar groomer and you don't get to pick up the dog till the end of the day. I can't do that. And there are some pets that can't be put in a crate and right. wait. I had a husky mix named Chipper who broke out of every crate and the groomer just gave up and, and Chipper just sat with her while she did all the other clients and had that goofy lift look on her face like, I broke out again, I broke out again, you can't keep Freedom. me in. Yeah, so I have a little dog, Emma, and uh, I have to pay a little bit extra so she gets expediated service so that she's first in and first out. And it, to me, it's worth it because I don't want her spending all day at a grooming situation. I don't know what's going on. Is that a benefit to have the groom van come to people because you do your job and you go to the next client, right? Absolutely. Mm. That is a huge benefit. And salons are fantastic. But I had that same experience before we started the grooming business. My dogs have never been crated. Um, yeah. they, and I would pay extra to have them come in and get out as quickly as possible. But even then, it was still, there's a lot of dogs on the tables. It a lot of people coming and going. Um, that's what I like about mobile. It just, it's so quiet in there. And we've had a lot of customers over the years that said, my dog doesn't do well with grooming, just giving you a heads up. And it was amazing when they're in the van and it's quiet and they're one-on-one -on -one with the groomer. Uh, it ends, ends up being a really good experience for them. I like that. We're talking with Amy Addington and Liz Gibbs of Woofies. When we come back, we're going to talk about why I put them on the show, which is because they think with health in mind, and we're going to talk about the partnership they have with a veterinary organization. So everybody, sit, stay. We'll be right back. Pet Greens is proud to support Obehave on Pet Life Radio. Our small family farm produces live organic cat grass, 
catnip, and soft chew treats packed with green nutrition to help your pets truly thrive inside. We're partnering with pioneer cat behavior expert and best-selling author Pam Johnson Bennett to help indoor cats live their best lives with indoor enrichment tips for their parents. Anyone who knows me knows I am a very strong proponent for cats being indoors. But when we bring cats indoors, where I feel it's safest, we have an obligation to make sure they have a fulfilling life, that they get enrichment. And part of that enrichment is encouraging health. And a big part of that health is cat grass. Cat grass helps with the prevention of hairballs. It can help keep your cat away from house plants. It's also fun for your cat. It's a natural behavior that your cat wants to chew and you know that you're providing it in a safe way. For more information on the benefits of cat grass and catnip for your cat's indoor enrichment, visit PetGreens.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Old Behave Show. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, think about this. Many of you know I'm a master instructor in pet first aid. I work with a lot of ER and critical care veterinarians all over the country to help keep our pets safe. And uh uh-oh can happen anywhere with our pets. Well, one of the big reasons I invited Amy Addington and Liz Gibbs from Woofies on, they have this national grooming vans all over. And they do other pet sitting services, pet walking, pet sitting, dog walking, things like that. But I think what makes you stand out is, tell us a little bit about this, Amy. You have recently uh, reached out and partnered with Pet Vet Connections. What is that? Pet Vet Connection is an incredible company. It's a, a conglomeration of a bunch of veterinarians that are on call. What this allows us to offer is 24-7 vet access via telehealth services. Um, you know, when you do the math, over 70% of households have a pet and think of, you know, how many times something might happen, even if it's just small, if you can not necessarily, can you always get into a vet appointment? Um, one may yeah. not be available. Um, and just being able to talk to a vet immediately has been amazing. So we've wrapped that into our service offering. So anytime a client is in our care, their, their dog, cat, any of their animals nice. that are with us, we have access to 24-7 vet telehealth services. So just if there was something that we had to ask a vet about or just to have that added peace of mind, and we've already used it. I know Liz has used it a couple of times with our clients. And from a customer service standpoint, it's it's amazing. And it kind of goes to our goal of elevating the overall level of professionalism in the pet industry. And to be able to wrap that added peace of mind with the 24-7 access to a vet with our services has really resonated well with our customers. And if you all know the math, it takes a long time, everyone, to become a veterinarian. There are not enough veterinarians graduating from major places every year. And the ratio of veterinarian to pet, it's getting wider. So I love that you have that. I have a lot of friends in the veterinary field that work on those services and they make a little extra pay and they get to help people. Liz, Amy said that you actually have used it in a couple of times. She put you on the spot. Can you share an example? Yeah. So like Amy said, it's the extra peace of mind. Um, So I always have the mentality, you know, it's better safe than sorry. Let's look into it. So we've had a couple of times, again, mostly grooming, like Amy said before, you're doing a shave down on a dog or you see something a little bit different, whether it's a little mole that might have opened up or if the dog has, you know, a hot spot or something. So I'm always erring on the side of caution and bring it up to the owner. Because like Amy said before, the owner might not know the dog had this under all the fur. Just just for peace of mind and just make sure as we could tell the owner, hey, this is what happened, you know, what the vet recommends and then go from there. So do you have a specific you can remember of something? You can Yes, we actually you, you can change the name of the dog to protect the innocent. Yes. Yes, I wouldn't name any names, but there was a dog a few weeks ago. We were pet sitting. Um, the owner said that sometimes her leg, she might limp, hold it up a little bit. So uh, my pet sitter noticed her leg um, being held up a little bit. So I went over there. We did vet telehealth. The dog was fine. The owner said, oh, yeah, it happens time to time, an old injury. But we got that peace of mind from the vet, what to say, give her some pain relief. And she was good to go the next morning. So the owner was happy that we noticed it, took that extra step, made sure his dog was was comfortable. So, and the dog was running around the next day. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, the, last, the last segment of the show, we got to spoil our dog. I am laughing because you offer a lot of spa specials. You've got hugs and kisses combo and the sugar cookie spritz. Who wants to explain those? Well, I guess I should talk about the sugar cookies. Okay, sugar cookie spritz for 200. It's not 200. It's I'm joking. Sugar cookie spritz. We know. Yeah, so we offer a bunch of different colognes and scented shampoos and options um, for our dogs. And I just love the smell of that one. It smells like warm cookies. But we also have the Beach Bellini one. That's a close number two, in my opinion. Beach um, Bellini. So All right. It, it smells very good. What's it smell like? I mean, I have a bartender's license. I'm I'm really curious about this now. No, I do. What is a Beach Bellini? It's like a peachy mango smell is the okay. best way I can describe it. So it's very fruity. smells like shampoo to me. I love it. So if you put your ear to the to the dog, will you hear the ocean too? I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it just smells nice. It's that extra little touch. We have some luxury shampoos that we use. So the different packages. I like that. Yeah, you get a special themed bandana, like for patriotic pups for Fourth of July, Memorial Day. Um, Halloween, you get some special pumpkin, you know, scented ones. It's always very popular. So we have fun with it. What is hugs and kisses combo? So that's usually around Valentine's Day. So you can get the cute little like heart themed bandana or bows for the hair. A lot of our poodles love the bows um, and just different scented spritzes. So there's um, a million different ones to choose from. So the owner also has fun selecting the scent for their dog too. So, And ladies, dogs come in all different shapes, sizes, and coats. And for 31 years, the Labrador Retriever was number one, according to the American Kennel Club in popularity. And now the French Bulldog is number one. Amy, how challenging is it to keep that coat healthy? Those, those short hair babies need their ongoing baths. They really do. You know, sometimes people think grooming and they just associate it with a haircut. And, oh, my dog has short hair. I don't need grooming. And the bath appointment is so incredibly important. It's, you know, giving the conditioner for the skin. It We brush their teeth. They clean their ears. They grind or cut their nails. Absolutely. So, it's so much more than that. And in fact, sometimes I feel like those short hair dogs, they need those grooming services even more, you know, just um, having that ongoing service. And it goes back again, tying into the health and wellness of the pup and keeping their eyes, ears and sanitary areas clean. And Liz, what do you think is one of the most challenging breeds to groom or, or, or clean? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily breed, but the senior dogs, we always get extra special attention to. Um, and they could be any mixture of breeds. So we've done a bunch of seniors and we always make sure we give extra time above and beyond care for them um, and make sure that's where the little um, the table kind of comes in handy. It has the bridge walkway connecting to the tub, lifting the table up. So we always want to make sure the seniors get extra care and we go above and beyond for them. Um, well, we have special mats for the seniors that we put on the groomy table just for that oh, added, added comfort. Give them a little more traction. Yeah. Oh, I like that. But I mean, there's some hairy dogs. Uh, I, yeah. my, my husky was part golden retriever and I used the Furminator brush in my backyard and I made a mountain of hair and Chipper sat next to that mountain of hair and it was the same height and I, it looked like I hadn't even groomed her. Have you ever met? Sometimes the van looks like a snow globe after we do a husky. <laughs> but it's good. Like people, you know, they'll realize that even though they don't get haircuts, huskies need to blow their coat several times a year. So um, we help get all that undercoat out. And the dog usually feels great afterwards. But it, it does look like you've been snowed on after. But So each one of you, parting messages that you want to bring out to people or share something, maybe a forecast. In five years now, Wolfies will be what? Oh, I'm going to put the uh, co-owner in the spot. Five years, Amy. In five years, I'd love Woofies to just be the leader in the pet services space. I want it to be the company that owners want their pets to go there to be taken care of. I want people to come work with us and have career path and career opportunities in the pet space. I love to see great people like Liz and so many amazing people that maybe don't even realize you could have a career in the pet services space. So that's really where I want to see Woofies in five years. Just continue to grow, grow responsibly with amazing franchise owners and have amazing team members. And what advice or parting message would you like to give, Liz? Um, yeah, I'd kind of go back with what we said um, and what we said earlier. Um, the rescue dogs are very special to us. So in five years, I would love for us to keep hitting as many rescues as we can, giving those dogs the care they need. 
um, and expand that as well with pet sitting, bring pet sitters to help walk dogs in shelters. But yeah, on a personal level, after being a general manager, being around Woofies, I would love to own my own Woofies one day. That's a personal goal. She for me. said it, boss. She said yeah. it. All right. <laughs> I love it. You never know, but it's just fun to see it keep growing and just meeting more dogs. Like I'm new to Florida and I've met so many cute dogs this way. And the Frenchies are one of my favorites. We did a Frenchie yesterday. So it's just great seeing all the, the local dogs in the area. Well, I can say it'd be an honor to have you as a Whoopi's owner one day. Oh, so thank you. that's the goal. <laughs> we have a mutual goal. So yes, you mm-hmm. heard it here first on the show. We have it on the record. <laughs> All right. right. Hey, everybody. I am so honored and happy to have on our show today two power makers in the world of pets. And that is they are Amy Addington and Liz Gibbs of Woofies. Check out woofies.com. I can't sign off without saying, hey, pause up to my producer. He is Mark Winter, executive producer of Pet Life Radio. We are the largest radio network for pets on the planet. Maybe on the moon. I don't know. Nobody's challenged us on that yet. Please check out all the other cool shows on the station. Please check out my YouTube channel. It's actually growing. I finally monetized. Come on. It's Arden Moore, my real name. And we have a new newsletter through Four-Legged Life. And I am big on safety. I teach a veterinary approved program called Pet First Aid for You. And it's uh, teaching you pet first aid and CPR with a real dog, a cool guy cool one named Kona and a cool cat named Casey and we make the learning fun and practical so check it out so until next time this is your flea free host Arden Moore delivering just two words to all you two three and four layers out there oh behave coast to coast and around the world it's all behave with Arden Moore find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown from famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.